Oh, you're looking at me. Mine's not that good. I'm from Iowa, which is why it's probably not that good. But um, uh, I was raised in kind of a small town in Davenport, Iowa. And uh, I guess my only outlets to music were driving to Iowa City, where the University of Iowa was, and picking up records and talking to those people about music. And uh, at the time, I would grab all kinds of random stuff. And I remember grabbing a Bad Boy Bill a mix CD, just kind of off the cuff. And that was my only real exposure to DJing growing up. Um, I was far more into like punk and hardcore, and uh, because of a band named Ready to the Machine, I tracked back a band called Inside Out, and I got really into hardcore, and I was playing in like crappy metalcore bands, everyone wanted to be in Slipknot, and I wanted to be in like Botch. And no disrespect to Slipknot, because you know, they hold down Iowa pretty hard. But uh, I moved to LA when I was 16, based on my mother's, uh, I guess, own decisions. I didn't want to move here. I, was, I thought I was the king. I was like super good at football in Iowa, probably because I was one of like four black people. And I, <laughs> I was just out running, jumping everybody, and moved here, and um, played a basketball game against Fairfax High School, and realized that I couldn't get a jumper off. I had to make some other decisions. Um, but I ended up getting a football scholarship to San Jose State. At the time, I was doing, all right, some San Jose folks. At the time, I was doing a lot of music stuff, a lot of design stuff, and um, I was messing around with DJing just because uh, it, it was fun, and I was really just playing like the dance records that I liked, and like punk rock records, and like at frat parties, you know, playing whatever I enjoyed. And um, I ended up moving back to LA and stumbling into like art and like, kind of like what is now this hipster scene or whatever. Where at the time was like me and a bunch of like dorky kids who couldn't get into the cool clubs where they played Fat Man Scoop, and. <laughs> We ended up just playing weird records and uh, like going to like parties with like Steve Aoki and those dudes and kind of carving out our niche. And one thing led to another, and um, my nickname was Skeeter. I started calling myself Skeet. Um, I only got cool words like, oh, Paper Magazine DJ of the Year 2008. Um, what else do I got? <laughs> uh, we're Pepsi DJs. Oh, yeah. I always forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. Pepsi thing. Yeah, we're Pepsi. We can't even be drinking these, I don't think. We gotta tear the label off or something. Um, what else? I'll just write Pepsi on here. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Maybe I can hold it too or something. If you guys take any photos, remind me. Um, but yeah, so I just play records, have a good time. I'm doing a bunch of production. The first artist I signed, Gumshoe, is here somewhere. I don't know where she is, but we've been in the studio all day. They, oh, that's Whoopi, never mind. That's, this is a black guy with long straight hair. Um, but yeah, that's my deal. Gary, talk about your wonderful event and uh, how well, beautiful you are. Well, I'll give you guys my story, my abbreviated story. Um, I'm originally from Potomac, Maryland. My father uh, has been in the record business since the uh, 60s. He was at Woodstock, took me to lots of concerts, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin when I was a little kid. He, he never really made it to the soccer game, but I got to see a lot of good music. And in uh, 1989, I think, 89, 90, I heard uh, electronic music in the clubs in downtown LA, the warehouses, and um, you know I'd always like Kraftwerk and you know the, the hip hop, the, the electronic production and all the hip hop stuff like Run DMC and you know uh, Luke Skywalker, Two Live Crew. So I heard this electronic music and I was I was just hooked and I figured out a way to start throwing events um, in like '90 '91 um, when there really wasn't. There was really nobody to DJ, or there was a few little DJs. So I just thought, well, I'll just try to, you know, do it myself, and um, started teaching myself to DJ. And uh, about 19 New Year's Eve, 92, 93, I did an event called Rave America at Knott's Berry Farm, and we sold it out, 20,000 people. And uh, Rick Rubin came, and he said, hey, I want to do this kind of music. I think that this electronic techno music that you do is going to blow up like hip hop, like I saw when I was in my dorm at NYU. And so I started working with Rick, and we signed XL Recordings, and Lords of Acid, and Prodigy, and Messiah, and like all these bands in 93. And I thought it was going to be the biggest thing in the world. It was my dream. I was like, I can't believe this. I'm working with Rick Rubin. And nobody really cared. And um, I just stuck with it, and I kept you know, working at labels and trying to put out electronic music. And I had a label deal with a and a label deal with Interscope, and then... Um, Around 1999, my brother, we actually got uh, Slipknot sent us a demo. My brother went to Iowa. I'll throw that in there since we're, 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 we're connected through Iowa. And uh, my brother became Slipknot's manager. And uh, he picked up all these metal bands. And so I started working with him. And um, 
about uh, 2006, I decided that the record business is kind of for the birds these days because no one's buying plastic CDs. So I'll go back to what I originally started was doing events and DJing. And um, about two years ago, coming up this New Year's Eve will be the two year anniversary, we started hard. And uh, A-Track was there on the first one. And uh, we had uh, Justice and Peaches and Two Live Crew. And uh, we just hit, hit it a good time. You know, I think my career, I've learned that in the record business, you can work with the best music in the world, but you have to have a lucky break with timing. And if you're at the right place at the right time and you have something super credible and good, you get, you get that, you just get that one chance, you know, and, with, I, and I worked my whole career to get it and finally with hard, it, it just hit. And uh, from two years ago till now, it's just taken off. So, you know, it's just kind of cool that, that this whole thing's taken off for all of us, you know, and uh, that's pretty much my story, I think. <laughs> Left out a lot of stuff, but. <laughs> Embellished. <laughs> yeah, that's, those are all laughing. So wait, should I moderate? They're asking us about Electro. I feel like a lot of you guys are Electro fans. Yeah? No, four of you? Five? Yeah. All right, well, I mean, do you want to talk? I mean, I guess that's an interesting subject. Yeah, I, even like maybe um, like how we all got, got into that sound. Because I, I know that yeah. neither of us were originally, you know, playing that stuff many years ago. It's more about yeah. stumbling into it. So you were in hip hop, isn't that right? Mr. Yeah, yeah, I was a, I was a hip hop DJ for years and years. I'm, um, I mean, I, I always used to listen to different styles of music. I mean, on one hand, when you when you're into hip hop and you produce some of those tracks, then of course you listen to like the stuff that you would sample. So everything from like soul, jazz, you know, funk. Um, and growing up, I was into a lot of classic rock also. Um, but I remember like in the in the mid to late '90s when I was really getting into DJing. Um, I you know used to buy just hip hop records and then the only electronic stuff that, that, um, that was on my radar was uh, the early Daft Punk records just because it was very loop based like you know the way they produced was with samples and it was actually similar to hip hop production in that sense just working the, the actual sam the, the samplers they used and, and the way they, they relied on loops um, and like the early Mr. Wezo stuff also that's, that's like those were the couple of electronic records that, that caught my ear around that period of like maybe whatever, 97 when that stuff came out, 96. Um, but for years, I basically stuck to hip hop. And um, around like maybe 2004 or so, um, I started um, just meeting a couple of new DJs around the Northeast. You know, I was in Montreal, which is close to New York. Now I live in New York. But I used to just come down to New York, visit my brother who lived there, um, and I would meet these DJs who were like doing a bit of a new thing with mixing different genres in their sets, where suddenly, um, you know, me and these these friends of mine started doing these these um, DJ sets where uh, it became a whole mix of genres of anything that could make people dance without really paying attention to what genre, to to yeah to where the song was from. Um, I mean, to the point where it was just like if it was in a certain range of tempo and it made sense, uh, then we would play it. And um, so the tempos kind of went higher up in my sets and it got to the point where suddenly it was like, well, you know, this house record or this, uh, you know, weird distorted European electronic record would make sense next to this fast outcast song and next to this old school Africa Bambada song. So let me play it. And then that's kind of how I started dabbling with a little bit more electronic music, even before the term electro really became like the way to, to, to uh, call this sound, I guess. And as time went by, I think I just got more and more into electronic stuff. Um, and nev never, never letting go of hip hop. I still, I, still, I still think the way that I DJ is as a hip hop DJ. And even if you hear me play a set that's all house and techno, then I play it technically uh, as a hip hop DJ, but but just got more and more and more into that sound and started producing it also. So you know, um, making tracks with Kid Sister, for example, and just you know some of those projects I was doing. I did a mixtape in 2007 called Dirty South Dance, where um, I grabbed a bunch of uh, like electro songs and, and put hip hop acapellas and vocals on them, and that became kind of the blueprint for a lot of the sound that I've been doing in the last two three years of just mixing up electronic music and hip-hop and, and, and sort of meshing it together uh, to now, you know, you'll hear me play sets where there's really a lot of dance music, really. 
even though I still think I'm a hip-hop DJ. I might not, <laughs> even if I don't play a hip-hop song in a set. But that, that's, how, that's how the transition happened for me.